Welcome to Happy Horror Time Podcast. My name is Tim Murdoch. And I'm Matt Emmert. And we are here today with one of the stars of A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream Child, the lovely, the talented Erica Anderson. Woo! Hi, you guys. Thanks Hi, so Erica. Much. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you for taking Thank the time. You. We, you know, I just, I just looked on the very trusty Wikipedia, which, you know, is a hundred percent truth, of course, yeah. but <laughs> it, it said that you're originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Is that correct? Uh -huh. yeah. So how did you, did you always know you wanted to be in movies or how did you get involved in acting? Um, well, I did it from when I was little. I was in, you know, church productions and school plays. And when I was really young, I would put on puppet shows for the neighborhood. And I was always into that kind of thing. So it was kind of in my blood already. And then um, after college, I moved to L.A. and I started going to the movies all the time, all the time. And I was kind of obsessed with it. And so it was almost like I put it on hold to get my education but I had a minor in theater too. So it was always kind of there. But um, at a certain point, I decided to really take it seriously. And I moved to New York and I studied in New York. And then I came back and Nightmare was really the first big movie that I got. That's awesome. And then you were also a model before you became an actress, yeah. right? You did Still model. am. Can you believe yeah. it? <laughs> oh, no, that's awesome. Yeah, it's so, amazing. I mean, you look, you, <laughs> I'm can, still doing it. No, so. that's incredible. Can you tell us about like, how did you get involved in the modeling career? And did that lead you also to acting or did you kind of do it both together? Well, I feel like in my mind, they were always very separate because I mean, some people would think that, you know, it helps because you get really comfortable in front of the camera and that kind of thing. But they're two very different things. And when you're a model, you kind of, um, you rely on looks a lot and you convey a lot with the way you look, mm -hmm. but with acting, you use so much more than that. And that's more what I was interested in at the time. So that's why I wanted to do it correctly mm -hmm. because there's so many people that dismiss models when they become actresses and they just think, you know, it's whatever your eye candy. So I can totally it. relate. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tim had to live his entire life being only eye uh, candy. It's tough, right? <laughs> I mean, they're okay. connected, but they're very different. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. No, but but that's great. I think so. So, I mean, obviously, getting into to before we get right into Nightmare Five. What I mean, so what was going on in your life right around when you auditioned for Nightmare Five? Like, what were you doing, and how? What brought you to that audition? I was oh, living man. in LA. Mm -hmm. And um, my agent called me and asked me if I would be interested. And I jumped at the chance because when I was growing up, I always loved scary movies. Nice. I love it. I love that. So, of course, I wanted to audition for it. And during the audition process, um, I was told later that they had a very hard time trying to find somebody for the role of Greta because they couldn't find a girl that they thought was pretty that was willing to get really ugly. <laughs> That's awesome. And I didn't care. So yeah. it was actually really fun. It's funny because we, we've we talked to a few different um, horror movie celebrities and it's like, you always ask them, how'd you get involved? And they say, well, you know, I got the audition. I didn't really know much about it. And I love that you're like, I knew it. I jumped yeah, at I it. I knew it. I, I was so series. into it. Yeah, so, you, so you are you a big horror fan then? Like mm -hmm. in general? Yeah, I love horror movies. Oh my god! But I like I like the more psychological ones more than like straight up gore. Although some of those are really good too. But any, I any always like favorite? Halloween is my favorite holiday. Oh, that's his. Uh -huh. I mean, I love it. I love the whole costume thing. I love being scared. I love haunted houses and all that stuff. It's so I, much fun. Yes, I know. No, the, you're 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 preaching that, to the choir. I'm speaking your language. <laughs> well, no, because I I throw a big Halloween party every year, with the exception of this year, unfortunately. Weren't yeah. weren't. But um, I just yeah. I did, me too. I, Oh, okay. Do you decor? Do you love all the decorations and fog machines and black lights? Love and stuff? it. Yeah, I love it all. I mean, um, when I was young, my parents really got into it, and it was so hilarious to me because one year my mom somehow got a hold of a gorilla outfit, 
Oh, and no. she came to my elementary school dressed as a gorilla and just walked up and down the halls and didn't say anything to anyone and scared the living shit out of everybody. Did they, Apparently, how did they know mom? the principal of the school knew that she was doing this and gave the okay for her to do this. And she came busting into my classroom with this gorilla outfit on and one poor little boy wet his pants <laughs> and she just went up to him and she said, it's okay, honey. I'm just a mom. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm dying. Her right head off and it was just her, but they got really into it. They would hide <laughs> behind the house and kids would come up, you know, to ring the doorbell for trick or treat. And she'd come up behind them and scare the shit out of them. Wait, wait. She okay. So that Walt Disney's thrilling, chilling sounds of the haunted house. And we'd crank the volume. So when people came up to the front door, they would hear that. Have you ever heard that record? I feel like I have. I mean, you must have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's got to be something that that. <laughs> I'm yeah, just, I'm it's still- a Disney record. And it was like, I feel like everybody who's like, you know, 35 to 60 probably heard that record when they were growing up. That's me. You know? uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm still picturing your wait, wait, what grade were you? I'm sorry. I need to get more on this story about your mom. Um, when mom grade- did that, probably yeah. like fifth grade, maybe. That is incredible. Well, does yeah, the gorilla it was amazing. Still exist? It was amazing. What? Does the uh, gorilla costume still exist? Do you no, still have- it's not around anymore. No. Oh, but there were geez. so many things that happened. You know, my dad, I had a part because my birthday is a week before Halloween. Oh, so okay. I had a birthday party when I was really young and, and my aunt was dressed up in a witch outfit. <laughs> she was dressed up in a witch outfit and she was in the backyard hiding behind a log pile. But my dad was in on it. And my dad said, girls, what is that in the backyard? And she's back there smoking a cigarette. And you can Ah. see like the cigarette lighting up, you know, the little ember Uh, burning. Uh And all the kids were scared to death. It was so funny. They loved it. So I think they just kind of instilled it in me. You have the coolest family ever. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They were awesome. Yeah, they were awesome parents. Uh, oh my God. I there okay. I have a million questions. I still want to ask about the gorilla, but I'm gonna keep moving forward. <laughs> I am um, that's amazing. I'm just like caught off guard. I love it. When so when you auditioned for Greta, what was the audition like? Like, what did they have you do? Because that's such a I mean, they had such an iconic death scene, but did did you have to do anything from that for the audition or did they just want I you? I don't even, remember. Like- I mean, typically you do two or three scenes, and usually you do either the most verbose scene or you do the hardest scene. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember which scenes they had me do, but they asked me flat out if I would mind, you know, prosthetic makeup. And obviously, I mean, I knew what was going to happen to me. I knew that my face was going to grow to this huge, disgusting, distorted thing. And I didn't (laughs) care at all. I was actually excited about it. And I think it was my enthusiasm that probably got (laughs) <laughs> no, well, well, one thing about one thing I think we love about Greta is she's such a fun loving, carefree character, you know, like right from the beginning, she's just like yeah. cool and fun and easygoing. And then and then she's being forced into being a model by her mother, yeah. which did you like, did you draw anything from your own experience as a model to put into the character or did I've seen complete? moms like that? Stage I mean, my mom didn't even want me to model. She did oh. not want me to do that at all. But I have seen, you know, it's a classic stage mom thing, right? Like you, you hear about it all the time and you see it. And fortunately I didn't come from that, but I've seen it enough. But I know that horrible crushing feeling when you do not want to do what your parents want you to do, you know, for a living. And that's kind of the situation she was in. That's what I was going to ask you about. Sorry, the connection went a little weird when I think you were talking about the actress who played your mother. Yes. What was her name? Because I couldn't even find her on IMDb. I don't know. I <laughs> oh, forgot. okay. Huh. But I, yeah, she's, I don't know that she's done a lot of stuff. So um, I looked for her before too on IMDb and I couldn't, I couldn't find her. Um, I'm sure that if you go to IMDb, you can find her name, but not her pictures. And I don't know, but I loved her. So she was cool. Like, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. What was she like yeah, she outside totally the, cool. the filming? She was just totally normal and not at all like. Yeah. That. Oh yeah. No, she had a, a blast doing that. She I was know. kind of like Cruella DeVille, you know? Yeah, I could see that. It is. Yeah. And it's a great character. It's like, it's so funny how like in so many of the nightmare movies, the parents are just awful people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, right? 
just don't care about their kids dying. Don't want to help. Don't believe yeah. them. The classic yeah, like movie. it's so obvious, but they don't see it, you know? Yeah. Especially in this movie where all the teens are totally connected to the um, parents, especially in that scene where they are graduating and they take the picture together. Yeah, that was great. That was really fun. So so moving forward in Greta's time in on the uh, screen. So after Dan dies, you know, the guy f- dies first. The Alice's hottest one in the movie. Ho- hot Dan. <laughs> we, we like to call him hot Dan. He had Dan. a really awesome death scene, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, really amazing. awesome. But your character, Greta, seems totally devastated by Dan's death. So we were wondering, like almost as much as Alice, like we were wondering, do you think that Greta was holding a torch for Dan or was something going on behind their back? We just want to make it a No, no, no. I think she was just really sad for her friend, you know? I mean, think about it. If you're in high school and you've got this little group of friends and one of them dies, I mean, that's pretty devastating. You're young and you're not, you're not really equipped to deal with that kind of thing. I think Greta was very close with all of her friends. And I think she just tried to absorb a lot of the sorrow and help in any way that she could. It, no, and it's good. And you're right. It's like so many horror movies. What I love about my favorite part of horror movies sometimes is how people treat death like it's just nothing. Like sometimes Tim and I will watch and like someone's friend died and they'll be like, oh, you know, like 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 anybody yeah. would have that reaction. Completely like they would be unrealistic. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. No, yeah. Totally. Or the thing that gets me all the time when you watch these horror films is you just get mad and you start yelling at the screen because it's like, come on, you idiot, don't do that. Everybody knows you can't do that. I've seen a million of these movies. I know what's gonna happen. Why don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, no, you're right. And it's like people are so and again, like we were talking about the parents, like parents never believe their kids. It's like never even give it a second thought. No, yeah. no, nobody. Yes, all your friends just died, but totally you're just crazy. Nothing's happening. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like that. You know, another part when you're upset over Dan's death, you're holding all these like creepy dolls. dolls. And yeah, <laughs> what were those dolls as creepy in the movie as they Yeah, looked? they were super creepy. In fact, I kept the doll that Ooh. was, you know, I had that doll that, that in the black, when everything turns black and white and then the doll falls and cracks and all that. Yeah. There was a doll that it was fashioned on and I I kept that doll for the longest time, but it was in a trunk. And every time I would get it out, I would look at it and think, why am I hanging on to this? It's so creepy, but I did. And then eventually I let it go. But Where dolls were just creepy in general, don't yeah, you think? I agree. I mean, I, I did have dolls growing up. <laughs> I, I don't, a Barbie dream house. Of course you did. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Christmas night. Barbies aren't creepy. I no. know they're gorgeous. No, uh, wait, yeah. wait. So you kept that doll for that. When you say let it go, do you mean like throw it away or like sell it to someone? Yeah, I think I moved and I just thought, well, there's no reason for me to have this. And it just went out with all the crap that left that house. Oh, no. Oh, I think I Tim, and I would have, terrible, Tim and I would have paid. Tim yeah. and I would have paid like thousands. Terrible. <laughs> I know, but you know, you don't think about that stuff. I know. Like, you don't I mean, know. I never would have thought that there would be conventions like there are now. I uh, never would have thought about that back then. Oh no. yeah. Well, when did you get involved in conventions? That's uh, Mikey. How, how yeah. did I mean, like, tell us the, the Mikey story. <laughs> I met him at a convention. I did one convention. I think it was in, um, it was in Texas. And they, they decided to get the whole cast together from Nightmare on Elm Street. And we all kind of did it together. And it, it was before they were packaging movie by movie. So they had like Jennifer Rubin was there and she was a friend of mine from back when. She's and a so, dream warrior. Um, what? <laughs> She's a dream, dream warrior. warrior. Yeah. <laughs> she, um, she and a bunch of other people were doing that convention. And so I got reunited with a lot of the people that I knew. And I met a lot of the people that I hadn't met that were also in the franchise. And Mikey was there that weekend. And we started talking and um, he started putting together things. And so I did a lot more of them. No, that's so cool. Especially for like people like us who are fans. Like, Yeah, it's really fun. It's a fun weekend to do. And also just like that you embrace that, you know what I mean? And want to be there because the fans care so much about these movies, yeah. obviously. And so well, that's why it's are. so thrilling, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird for me because lots of times um, the fans know my dialogue like better than I remember it. Like 
because I haven't thought about it in so long. You mean uh, brushing your teeth for the paparazzi? That one I know because I know. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> no, um, um, so um, back to w with the film, like the production. I've heard and I know we've watched, you know, like Never Sleep Again and and the documentary that the production on it was so rushed that literally, like the script was being written and rewritten as you were filming. Was it total like chaos on the set, or was that did no. not? No, um, I mean much? that's that's how soap operas are. I hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you're handed your script the morning of and they are constantly making changes. And I think that happens, you know, in certain films, too. You know, if there's a problem and they have to do a rewrite and if something's not working, um, you just have to be really on your toes and yeah. be able to handle that and sort of roll with the punches. It was not chaos ever. Yeah. Not That's at all. Cool. Yeah. And it was so it was always just like a fun environment while you were yeah. there, even though no really fun cool. environment. The only thing that was a bit of a drag um, was the prosthetics, you know, were so long and involved. And I think it was something crazy, like three and a half hours to do my makeup. Oh, gosh. Oh. And it was in different stages. And um, once the makeup's on, you're in it. So it's a little difficult. How did you eat lunch that function. day? <laughs> gross well <laughs> that's well that's like getting to that scene that's a big question one to ask you about i mean yeah, obviously like you're, you're limited i'll just say you're limited on what you can eat because it's you know the prosthetic itself comes out to about here so there's like this sort of channel <laughs> yeah. yeah so you basically are supposed to eat drink through a straw but um, as you can imagine, when you're on set for like 10 hours, you get a little hungry. Yeah. And after you do that for a day or two, it's like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. And um, I remember one day we were served spaghetti for lunch. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it collected in that thing. It was just <laughs> in there. And I'm under the hot lights. And it smelled. And it was nasty. And yeah, it was not fun. And, you know, here's the other thing. You wrap. And everybody gets to leave, but not me because I've got to take off all this stuff. So it just kind of, you know, it was difficult. That was a bit difficult. Yeah, but well, the mean, guy who designed the makeup, Todd Masters, was so fun. He was really fun to work with. And we're still friends now. And so, you know, I think everybody made the best of it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what we were going to ask about with the death scene is literally, I would say, one of the most iconic yeah. death scenes in the entire series. I mean, and also that's where I think Freddie, to me, um, he has two lines that people <laughs> quote through the series. One yeah. is welcome to primetime, bitch. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. second is bon appetit, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Which was the, was that, loved, was that it, improv or that I'm not sure you'd have to ask Robert about that, but it was so perfect. And Rolling Stone called it the catchphrase of the summer, the year oh, the movie cool. came out. So it was uh, like, I hear that all the time. That's what I was that, say, It's like, so much in my head that when I go to a dinner party and somebody says bon appetit, I always hear bitch. <laughs> <laughs> It is funny that like, but Freddie, like literally his two most iconic lines has to have bitch on the end. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. good old Freddie. What, what was Robert Englund like working with? Like, especially in that scene? Oh, he was super fun. He was really fun. He was great. And we've heard he's a big Not, storyteller. You know, I think sometimes, you know, you would be intimidated by someone like him because A, he's in that crazy costume and he's also really the star of the franchise. So um, I think a lot of people might be intimidated, but he was always super friendly and super down to earth. And, you know, he hung out with us and really easy to talk to. And, you know, it was great. And we've heard similar from because we've talked to a few people and then they all say like they say he tells great stories that yeah. he's like, you know, like the <laughs> nicest person. I don't and think everything. I've ever heard a bad Freddy Krueger story. Uh, yeah. Robert Englund. Oh, yeah. yeah. Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Freddy, Freddy Krueger, on the other Two hand. Two different people. Child Two murder. Great guy. No, no. How many days did it take to film that death scene? Because you said, I mean, obviously they're long days, but do you know how many days? Yeah, I don't really remember, but I think, um, you know, the whole movie we shot within a month. That's oh. crazy. So everything was kind of, And yeah. it's not CGI. It's, it's practical no, effects. No, thank God. Yeah. It was before yeah. all that stuff. No, I know. So, Which is better. And and yeah. so another thing that is that that scene is known for is that apparently the MPAA cut out a lot of parts. Yeah. Do you know like are there? I don't know if you know the specifics of it, but like, do you know stuff that we what we didn't get to see? Like I've heard things about like that he's feeding you like your insides or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'm just wondering like how well, he far rips open like, my stomach. 
And <laughs> inside my stomach is cupcakes and cake and candy and all the things that a model is not supposed to eat. Oh, that's funny. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And so wow. it, went, it came out of my stomach and into my mouth. And, you know, it was just, it was gross. It was really gross. And I think that's why they cut a bunch of it out because... It was pretty disgusting. And what about the fridge scene? Like when you're hanging out of the fridge? It was um, hard not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really hard not to laugh. Oh, oh it was really oh, fun. Yes, I remember that yeah. when Alice sees her. Yeah, and yeah. She's trying to help her out. And of then, the of fridge. course, and then the door shuts and it says, die, bitch. Yeah. Right? <laughs> gotta, get that, gotta get that bitch in there somewhere. I mean, <laughs> so who added that? Do you have any, I mean, I know I'm asking you about a movie from a long time ago, but do you remember who put die, bitch, out there? No, I'm sure it was a production designer. You know, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so one of the things you had said in, in um, Never Sleep Again, that the, the one thing that you would kind of wish about the movie that's a little bit more scary, less comical, which I kind of yeah. I kind of agree. Like, to be you know honest, what I mean, like a lot of them sort of got funny. And uh, yeah, I just the first one was so dark. dark. Yeah, and he was really scary and ominous. And then as time goes on, you know, the catchphrases make it funny. And then yeah. because he gets a good response from the catchphrases, then they want more of that. And that's just the way movies work. Yeah. You know? And by the way, just so you know, like I a hundred percent agree with you. <laughs> I do think yeah. like it was starting to get more comical, but as much as I absolutely love part five and there's so many fun scenes, you're seeing the most iconic. You are right that there's definitely a difference in tone between like yeah. the beginning one. And then it gets, you know, <laughs> Freddie die bitch and Bon Appetit I bitch. Mean, you know? It's still <laughs> scary. It's still scary. It's just, a, it's like a, it's you, it's you're scary than laughing, scary than laughing, which is a hard line to walk. Yeah. And it, yeah. and it like and another thing is that part five has so many serious themes combined with the comedy, like with, you know, like a, a a bo abortion and a baby and like that kind of stuff mixed with Bon Appetit bitch, you know, yeah. <laughs> I know it's so crazy. It's I know. Really no, crazy. no, it totally is. I feel like even Nightmare three had some really scary stuff in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it no, was it less comic. But I just think with each installment, it got more and more and more. um just somehow a little more comic book. Yeah. yeah. No, Maybe. you're right. You're right. So when the filming was done after that very rushed month, um, was there a premiere? Yeah, for was it? there a red yeah. carpet? This is my yeah. favorite question. <laughs> it was my first red carpet and it was at the Chinese theater. Awesome. And um, and we all went together and it was really, really fun. I, I got to bring um, a lot of friends of mine. And, you know, obviously they'd never been to a movie premiere. It was my first premiere. But I, I remember I went out and bought this really fancy dress and um, we were all really excited about it. And just like kind of all sitting there sort of holding hands when the movie started. And that feeling that you get when you've never seen anything, because we didn't go to dailies. We didn't do that. To see it for the first time was pretty spectacular on that's a so, giant screen. Yeah, the Chinese is a giant things? theater. Yeah. Yeah, I love it that was theater. really great. That that's like the best answer that I want to hear. Yeah. It's like because I I feel like no because like we think of these movies, we absolutely love these movies, and that's what I wanted to know about the feeling of like the first time seeing it on yeah. the big screen. And when did you become aware of all the fandom behind the series, or did you know before? Because oh, I knew about it before because okay. I was a fan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I knew about it before, but I think it's grown you know, over Thanks time, the like each yeah. one it grows and it grows and it grows. And now you've got little kids that are into it, even though it's an older movie, there's kids that are super into it. And there's fans that are older. There's fans that are young now. And you see that when you go to the conventions, I, when I, I do a convention, my cheeks hurt from smiling so much because <laughs> everybody is so kind and they're so sweet and it's just so nice to meet them. And it kind of validates, you know, what you're doing and why you do this. That that's awesome. Yeah. For, I yeah. mean, like, seriously, just want to say thank you for saying that because it does it, 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 and it valid and it makes us as fans feel great to see these people that we, you know, idolize because they're in these movies we love to be yeah. so appreciative for these opportunities and to look back on it with such fond memories. You know, I mean, what's funny is that so that was even though it was you knew there was fandom behind it. Did you think 31 years later now it's no. been that people would still no. be talking I really didn't. I kind of thought, you know, 
I mean, and at the time they weren't that old, right? Like I was in five. It wasn't that old. When did the first one come out? Like 84, 85, 84. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is like four or five years later. So but you're like in the, I mean, like you're in the, the, I always think the first five are the best. Like you're, it's the 1989, yeah. like there's no CGI. It's all practical effects. Like, yeah. It's like, you have a hot young cast. Like, I think it's so, you're like in such an iconic series. Yeah, it is. I like that. Yeah. Hot I'm, young I'm cast. Really, listen, it's the truth. <laughs> I'm yeah. so grateful to be a part of all of that because, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't really do that much acting anymore. So mm -hmm. just to know that something that I did that long ago is still resonating is just kind of amazing. It's a legacy. Yeah, it really it is. is. It's a legacy. Yeah. Like everyone has different legacies and it's just, it is cool to be a part of that. Do you keep in touch with any of the cast or crew members in the, from the film or? Um, well, I live in New York now, so they're all on the West coast and I don't, I don't really see them, but when I do, it's like we pick up right where we left off. That's you know, so cool. and we still have the same kind of like relationships. Like I did a convention, Joe Seeley was there and oh. it was like, we were best friends all over again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you kind of just immediately go back to it. You must have friends like that, that you don't see all the time. But as oh. soon as you see them, it's like, you never missed a day. You know, and, yeah, and it's almost like you know, it's like I have friends from like a theater group I was in, and it's like you start talking about that like it was yesterday. Nerd. Or, yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I have nerd for, no, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like it's like when you have that common memory, you can always go back, and there's always stories and inside jokes. And plus, and I mean, you, I mean going through because you know makeup for the the long hours and everything you went through something that no one else like matt and i haven't done that so it's like you always have that bond it does take me yeah. a few hours to do my hair well but... you look terrible <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> kidding well then then so the, the moat when you're at the conventions what's the most common thing people say to you or ask you is it the bon appetit bitch line or what is the most <laughs> no it's gnash my teeth for the paparazzi i love it I love oh it. that That's is great one. and yeah, this is that one being followed crazy. by Bon Appetit, bitch. <laughs> I, you know, also, it's like, maybe they don't want to be disrespectful. So they don't want to come right up and say Bon Appetit, bitch. <laughs> it's easier to say gnash your teeth, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> that seems to be the one. Your hair in the pool scene, the ponytail looks so good. But <laughs> FYI. <laughs> Thank you. It is yeah, the cutest really pony. Nice. Yeah. Good. Um, so, you know, obviously you've done a lot of other things in your career, and I know we're touching mostly on Nightmare 5, but the one thing I did want to ask you about, because I'm a huge, huge fan of it, was Twin Peaks. And oh, yeah. obviously, you know, you were on, it was like the show within the show of Twin Peaks. It was the soap opera Invitation to Love. Yeah. And I just wanted to, like, how did you get it? First off, yeah, I absolutely grew up um loving loving twin peaks and oh, me too um, i thought yeah. it was one of the best things i'd ever seen on television yeah Same. how did you, you know? get involved with twin peaks and what was it like working with david lynch and mark frost um i got involved because i auditioned for it uh -huh. so that was it um mm -hmm. And I didn't really get to work with David when we shot Invitation to Love. He was supposed to direct it, but he was working on Wild at Heart with Nicolas Cage and they were behind. So he got stuck, work stuck. I shouldn't even say that, but he ended <laughs> up doing that. So Mark stepped in and directed our stuff. And um, it was such a great, it was so weird, first of yeah. all, like I'm playing twins and they could not be more opposite. Yeah. Um, but we shot in that beautiful Frank Lloyd Wright house, you know, in LA. And it was just, it was a really, really great day. And I think because the script was really almost plain, mm -hmm. you know, um, we started having fun with it and we kind of started to improv a little bit and <laughs> we made it fun. And we were doing a lot of things that weren't in the script. And Mark really liked that. But I ran into David at a party after. And he, um, I don't think he really, that's not what he wanted us to do. <laughs> really? Wait, what, what did he want? That's not really what he wanted us to do. I think he wanted us to play it straight. Oh, well, you know, I love like it. Like I'm stroking Chet. And mm -hmm. then I look at the. I look at my hand because he's got all that goop in his hair, like that kind of thing. That those are the little things that we did that were really silly. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it really worked for him. 
And I was it's, really sad about that. That's so funny because it's like, well, first it is so over the top, which I love, but it's like Twin Peaks is such a weird, like, like I, I can't, I, it's so funny to hear like that someone said like, no, that's too much when it comes to Twin Peaks. I know, Peaks. right? I feel like anything goes. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, and you know, for an actor, it's fun to just like stretch a little bit and improv and do what you want to do and see how it goes. And if it works, you kind of keep doing it. And um, we had a blast that day. Everybody was really fun. We had a blast doing it. And it was all pretty silly anyway. Um, and as you know, it's a soap opera within a soap opera. And it's supposed to kind of um, sort of show what might happen in the series before mm. it happens. So mm. I'm twins. And then you find out that Laura Palmer's twin cousin, Maddie, is right. yeah. dark hair. No, so it's that dark hair and glasses. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, was but it... we we had a great time doing that. It was really fun. I just wish, I mean, for the series, I I wish it would have continued on, but it, you know, near the end it started to get a little too fantastical and I understand. Yeah, did um, you watch did you watch the reboot or whatever I that did. Came... Yeah. I did. I did too. I um I liked all the cameos, <laughs> but I just don't think it holds a candle to the original. I was going to wait for you to say that first. Yeah, <laughs> I just think the OG was so much better. It was. And also, I, um yeah, I remember because uh, I was like only maybe 10 when Twin Peaks came out. But and, oh, and my God. I, well, and you watched it at 10. That's what that's what I'm saying. Sometimes I look back and I think, like, was I old enough to be able to like, yeah, there was some creepy ass shit. in that no, I, creepy. I, I, I didn't watch it until five years later when I was like a junior in high school with, on video. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, uh huh. No, but uh, but it is funny because um, it, like, but I I just think I was glad I was so excited for the reboot. I agree. It, it didn't. It wasn't everything I would have wanted. But I also think like maybe I didn't appreciate the same as an adult as when I was a kid, or I don't. I don't really know. It was just. But either way, I think it still goes down as I, I think yeah. one of the best. I just TV think it's series. So, such yeah. dreamy television, and the, with the score, it just takes you there. I mean, it was completely gripping. I could yeah. not wait every week for that show to come on. Yeah. And my friends all felt the same way. And when it went off, you know, and they were on hiatus and it was summertime, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. we needed some detective story. We needed something to get involved in because it was so engrossing and everybody was talking about it. Yeah. yeah. And also for me, it was... um it was kind of strange because when I got brought on, I didn't know anybody and they were kind of already shooting, I think. And um, so I was invited to this party with the cast, like out in the valley on the set. And I went out there and I didn't know anybody <laughs> and I hadn't shot my stuff yet. So I really didn't know anybody at all. Oh. And um, oh my God, what is wrong with me <laughs> that I can't remember her name? Laura Flamboyle, Major Namek. Um, no, it was Laura Palmer. Oh, oh. Uh, Cheryl Lee. Yes, yeah. thank you. Oh my God, that's amazing. I know. I'm. I'm. Obs I'm obsessed. I haven't thought about this in so long. <laughs> she came up to me and introduced herself, and she goes, "Let me show you around," because oh. I didn't know anyone, and I think she kind of could sense that. And so she took me around and introduced me to everybody, and showed me all the sets and what they were doing. And if it hadn't been for her, I would have oh. been lost at sea. Wow. Like I wouldn't even know what to do because I didn't know anyone. That's you so know, nice. and they weren't yeah, really coming up and talking to me because they didn't know me and I wasn't part of their group. And oh. I think I was the only one from Invitation to Love that came to that party. So because it was yeah, separate. I, was just, I mean, you were filming the Invitation to Love scenes were probably filmed completely separate from anything with they the were. show. Yeah, yeah they so. were. I wonder yeah. if they're like, I wonder, she's the killer. She <laughs> killed Laura Palmer. <laughs> no, I really loved Cheryl. I thought she was great. She was terrific. No, she, she is. So and, good. And, and I have to tell you, when they did the reboot, I watched the reboot, and then I went back and watched the original again. Mm -hmm. And that's how I can tell you with confidence that the original was so much better. Yeah. It was just so weird and so great. But also, I think David Lynch was really on a roll then. I, I mean, I think, for me, anyway, Blue Velvet is one of the best movies of all time. I agree. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. And when that movie came out, I was living in Italy, and so I wasn't able to see it. And I remember, because it was such a scandal, like Isabella Rossellini was such a scandal because she was naked and like it was a big deal. And she was in all these Italian magazines and newspapers and stuff 
but I couldn't speak Italian. So I didn't really know what they said. <laughs> so I was kind of dying to see this movie. And when I got back to the States, I think I saw that movie like 16 times. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. I was so into it. I that may it. be the amount of times we've seen Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might have seen it that many times, too. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, I know. Um, yeah. um, well, just like a, a, a final couple questions. Well, first, I mean, we've covered Twin Peaks, but one thing I have to ask you, who is a better kisser, Nicolas Cage or Judge Reinhold from Zandalay? Oh, my God. <laughs> you can't ask me that question. <laughs> you can't ask me that question. I don't even... Uh I can't give you an answer for that. <laughs> I can't because, you know, it wasn't real. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, Nick True, was it's, supposed it's to be a little bit scary. Yeah. yeah. And Judge was supposed to be my safe haven. So, yeah. different well, thing. Always go with the scary kisser. Go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always go with scary. No. You know, I don't think it was a scary. Here's your answer. Maybe that month. <laughs> The, Maybe the, the mullet. mullet was amazing from Nicolas Cage, by the way. I think he should have kept that. that what hairstyle. was amazing? Was it a wig? Oh, the mullet. What was his, amazing? His mullet hairstyle in the movie. Oh my God. Oh my God. Right. Was it a wig? Okay. It was um what do you call it when they like extensions? Kind of, yeah, it was like that, but they weren't very well done. <laughs> <laughs> you might have noticed that. Love like that. when when the first time you see him and he's framed in the doorway and he's a silhouette, you can tell it's like the bottom half of it was kind of like right. straw. It just didn't fit. It wasn't quite right. There were issues. No, I we did know the hair did look a little different, but I mean oh, not yeah. just the mullet part, but yeah. yeah. I think everybody was shocked, frankly. Because he looked like himself when we went through the audition process. And that's kind of what I expected. I expected him to show up on set like that. And he showed up on set with this goatee and that hair. And I think in his mind, he thought it would be really interesting if he showed up looking like Jesus Christ. And everybody was like, oh! <laughs> You're like, what? Well, got the scary part down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so our final question, unless you have anything else. So we ask everyone this kind of toward the end of it. it. What is one thing you can tell us about Nightmare 5 that you've never told any other podcaster, interviewer, convention? Just one thing, even if it's a tiny little bit of gossip, a, piece a, of crumb. a story, a crumb, one tiny detail about it, anything. <laughs> it could be like one day on you know I've it. talked about all the interesting stuff so yeah. I just I feel like if I'm gonna tell you anything it's not gonna be that interesting I got oh to trust me anything my wardrobe oh yeah what, what, what about your wardrobe I got to keep most of it oh that's cool oh okay that is cool because you got some yeah. even, the, even the white dress um that you... I did not keep no oh but there was a you know my favorite there was a green cardigan and I don't know what scene I wore it in, but it had all these like appliques on it and it was bright green and it had like roses and sayings and all this crazy. I remember that was that. my favorite. It's cute. Uh, I got to keep that stuff. So, well, you got to keep the wardrobe. And and I'll the tell doll. you also, I never told anybody about the doll. Oh yeah. That, I so mean, that's, that is amazing. I just love, I love that the you doll was in my, my trunk for years. Yeah, <laughs> years is super creepy. And then Matt, I, Matt, I, I, like, I don't even know why I have it because it's just like in this trunk with stuff on top of it. Like I just need to get rid of it. I love I that. You're like that at a garage sale. <laughs> You're like that's why my house was haunted for all those <laughs> years. <laughs> Well, th seriously, thank you yes. so much for doing this you with are so us. So welcome. We're so grateful, and we love you, and we're yeah, such fans. Oh, You're really thank awesome. you. It was really nice talking to you guys. Yeah, yes. no, it's really been great. Thank you so much. Seriously, we're uh, very, very yes, grateful. Yes, thank so, you so and, much. Um, You're awesome. Oh, you are yes. welcome. You are and welcome. We, and I hope I get to meet you someday. Yes, yes. we would love to. I mean, yeah. uh, when, for, when COVID is done and we can do oh, we would love to yeah. see you at a convention. Or yeah, that, like, exactly. hopefully I would love are, that. So just let me know if, I mean, once this is all over. Yes, yeah. no, definitely. Stay and we'll keep, we'll keep you posted as to when the um, episode is going to go up probably in a few okay. weeks. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. You were awesome. Your stories are amazing. It's yeah. great. Seriously. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank well, take you. care. Have a, have a good day. Talk okay. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Happy Horror Time. We are so happy you've taken the time to check out our podcast. This podcast is hosted by Matt Emmer and myself, Tim Murdoch. It's co-produced by Jacob Randall. 
You can find Happy Horror Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Happy TV, and many other streaming platforms. If you'd like to stay updated, please like and follow Happy Horror Time podcast page on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Happy Horror Time. And if you'd like to contact us, send us an email at happyhorrortime at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts, your movie recommendations, and any horror celebrities you'd like us to interview. To support the podcast, please visit patreon.com slash happyhorrortime and sign up to be a patron. That'll give you access to our growing library of bonus episodes. Our goal is to release at least one bonus episode per month. Before we go, we'd like to recommend a podcast hosted by our co-producer, Jacob Randall. It's a true crime podcast called Crime of Your Life, in which Jacob takes a look at unsolved criminal cases and other mysteries while examining the true crime genre itself. It's incredibly engaging, and we definitely recommend it. I'm Tim Murdoch. And I'm Matt Emmert. And thanks thanks again again for listening to Happy Horror Time. Time.